Son, Holy Spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O 
O God, who has caused, caused this holy night to shine with the illumination of the true light, grant us, we beseech thee, that as we have known the mystery of that light upon the earth, so may we also perfectly enjoy him in heaven, where with thee in the Holy Spirit he liveth and reigneth, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, who have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as a fuel for fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Here endeth the reading.
reading from the letter of Paul to Titus. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age, to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from an all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. that all the world should be taxed. 
and this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espouse and wife, being great, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same company shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste, and found Mary, and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. And he is named Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. You may be seated. My goodness, welcome everybody. We are so glad to be amongst you and you are welcome and we are, we are sitting within the, the grace of the Holy Spirit of God here this evening in this, in this place as so many others over the, over the decades into the centuries have sat here with one another hearing this Splendid story about the birth of our Savior. 
Is there any question in any of our minds that we need a Savior? I won't ask for a show of hands. Boy, I sure do. I need that Savior. I call upon him regularly. I do not give him any good peace because I need him, because it's all of us. Look around at the world that, that is out there in front of us, in front of our eyes, in front of ourselves. How limited is my reach, is my sight, and yet there are so many things that I need to talk to God about. And God listens. God listens to all of us. I am so convinced of that, and I mention it often in this place, in this space, that God listens and no prayer goes unheard. None. And prayers come in many forms. They happen here in beautiful word and glorious music in stained glass and candlelight. God is here in this space. And I hope, I hope indeed, I hope deeply that you can feel God's presence here. And that no matter how you come here, there's going to be a ruffled feather or two. And let God smooth that down. Because you know God will. God will indeed do that. And I want to tell you about a prayer. A prayer I experienced that changed my life and in some respects brought me to this place. I've told some, but not everyone. I was a hospice volunteer in Washington, D.C. for 18 years. My goodness, it's hard for me to imagine I did anything for 18 years. I have trouble sometimes keeping a focus on what I should do this afternoon. So I got a call from the desk at, hosp at hospice, and they wanted me to go see a new patient. And I knew that, that I was going to encounter perhaps some troubles, but certainly some heartbreak, because I could hear it in their voices. Don't you see, I was the one who went where other people's didn't feel comfortable going. And yet I knew someone needed to, and I volunteered to stand in that very short line of one. And so I was given a phone number, and I called that phone number, and I heard a wonderful, somewhat hesitant, but grateful voice at the other end of the line. Her son was dying. And I asked her if it would be okay to visit and when should I do that, and she told me as soon as possible. She told me the address didn't know the particulars of the address, but I certainly knew the general whereabouts. It was on south, off of South Capitol Street in Washington, D.C., across the river. So I got in my car, and I crossed the river, and I got to her apartment. And it was a simple apartment. It was public housing. She lived in a third, in a third row or a third story walk up. 
I had asked her how I was to get in through the front door, and she said that would be no problem, she would be waiting for me, and she was. And I look up, up the sides of the, of the building to the row of windows, and there was one row that was decorated. Someone had painstakingly with, with miniature lights written out, joy is Lord Jesus' is love. She met me and we went up the three flights of steps and into a, I can't say it was lovely, but it was gracious, if you know how that works, apartment. It was perfectly clean, perfectly clean. And hers, of course, was the apartment with the Jesus' is love on the window blinking off and on. Jesus is love, Jesus is love. And so we stood there in the apartment for, for a few minutes and we sort of exchanged pleasantries, but she wanted to tell me who she was and about her son and I wanted to tell her about some of what made me tick. And she asked me if I would like to see her son and I said, absolutely, I would love to be introduced to your son. And so she took me into his bedroom. He was in the bed, he was breathing regularly. He seemed to be perfectly at peace. He was washed. And everything seemed in that moment as good as it was going to get. And so that you can sense this and the easiest scent that we have to return ourselves to a place or a time is that I can tell you that the primary scent of this apartment of this 20-some-year-old man was a bar soap. You know what that smells like? I bet you do. It's clean. It's not overpowering. But it infuses everything, everything around it. And so she and I stayed in the room but for a moment and then we went to the couch underneath the, the blinking lights that, that blinked on and on, on and off, that, God is love, Jesus is love. And she set about telling me her life story, not all of it, but the important parts, the important parts of how she and her son got here and in some fashion how I got here too. It was a bad marriage. She was hit a lot. She had two children, a son and a daughter. Her little son came to her one day and said, Mom, we, we have to get away from here. We have to get away from here. This is not good. This is not safe. It's not safe for you, it's not safe for me, it's not safe for my little sister, who was one at the time. And we have to get away from here, and it's not, it's not going to be easy, and I know that, and I know that we don't know exactly where we're going, Mom, but don't you know I'm going with you, and none of us are alone and I'm going with you, and it's going to be okay. It is going to be okay, Mom. Let's do this as quickly as we can. He was probably about 11 at the time. 
let's do this as quickly as we can because he sensed blessed child that he was he sensed that there was danger and they needed to get away from it and that's what they did the three of them carrying a little suitcase with not very much in it because they didn't have much to take with them and they went and they found a shelter and a women's program and they were safe and they needed that more than anything else in the world at that moment. Things started being pulled together. They were able to pull some things together. The people that, they, that were looking after them was, were pulling things together. And little by little, they got their footings and they, were, they felt safe with each other and they could attend to the baby. Oh my, and that was perhaps 15 years or so, maybe a little less than when I was talking to him or to the mother. And things had progressed and they had each put life back together as best, best they could. But the son got sick. The son got sick and she was taking care of him. And that was the son in the bedroom. And that's what a mother does, particularly a mother who is besottedly in love with her children. And it was Christmas, don't you know? And it, the sun had set, it was shining when I when I got there, but you know how the sun sets so quickly this time of the, of the year. And so we started to say our goodbyes, and I told her that I would be back very soon, within the week, and that she could call me anytime she wanted to, and I would be a listening ear, a non-judgmental listening ear. And I gave her a hug because that was in that moment what she needed and what I needed too. Oh boy, did I need that hug. That is a Christmas story. It is about what comes through salvation, the salvation of her child, just as we all, we all of us have experienced salvation through a child, through a son, through someone, a human being, completely a human being is born. And so oftentimes, those human beings are not born in the best of circumstances, and in some respects, that's perfectly incidental. Just as incidental as it can be. So here we are this evening, yet once again, celebrating the birth of a child in straightened circumstances. But that child is our salvation. Without that child, we're lost and bumping around in the dark and not knowing which way to go. And then a child tells us, you know, you know this is not working out, but here I am and we can go together and we can start making things better because what we all need is that Savior. And you know, we get them. We get them when we need them. We get those Saviors. 
and I walked down the three flights of stairs and out the door. And as I went toward where my car was parked, I looked back over my shoulder and I could see blinking off and on again. Jesus is love. Jesus is love. Jesus is love. Let us bless the Lord. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the God of his Father for all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, the God of not made, being of one substance to the Father. from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all, the, all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city of Baltimore, for our Charles and Waverly villages, for every city and community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God hath given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel, on land, on water, or in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick, and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for all those commended to our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. In the communion of Our Lady, blessed Joseph, blessed John, the holy angels, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, thee O oh Lord, our God. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and on all who turn to you for help for you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who, who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. And with our spirit.